Well, greetings and welcome to another episode of Cosmic Kev 100, your weekly astro video zine where we take the houses known as Babas, the signs of the zodiac known as Rishis, and the planets themselves known as Grahas or Grabbers. And we try to make sense of it and according to what your rising sign is, first of all, if you know that, that, that gives you the most accurate horoscope. Secondly would be your moon sign. And third, if you don't know anything else, your sun sign, it's, it's somehow it works still. And um, we're going to just do this. And so this is for October 18th through the 24th. Fourth, I believe, of uh, 2024. So, yeah. So, looking at the sky today, we still have a pretty big moon out there. And today it's in the lunar mansion or nakshatra known as Barani. Now, it's in the constellation of Aries as you look at it. I know it's seasonal, Taurus. We'll talk about that later. But we'll just talk about if you had, you know, your. Your telescope, where, what part of the sky will you find the moon? You'll find it in the constellation of Aries right now. And Barani is ruled by Venus, and Barani's ruling deity is known as Yama. Yama is the second son of the sun, and it's with his legitimate wife, Prajna, whereas the, uh, the first child or son of the sun is Saturn, and that was through... Prajna's shadow, Chela. And um, Yama is kind of a little bit, a little more spoiled, I would say, than Saturn, being, you know, in, in that royal family. Saturn's dealing with rejection right from the get go, whereas Yama is accepted, but Yama is also the god of death. And Barani is also the yoni, the female sex organ, the reproductive organs of the female. Now, a lot of things are hidden in Barani, just like female sex organ compared to the male sex organ is pretty much hidden. A lot of it, it's internal. And it's a Venus ruled nakshatra, very appropriate. On a, and today is a Friday. It's a Venus day. So um, feel the love, you know, feel that, that whole place. Now, it's all within the constellation of Aries. And so there's a sort of Mars aspect to it, too, which is very passionate. I mean, really get caught up in things. You have Venus and Mars, it's, you know, and you've got the Yoni as a symbol. I mean, it, it's a definitely, it's like a sexy nakshatra. Um, and, and it's death, too. Yama is a god of death. But this particular nakshatra is also about the Peter Pan syndrome and about being perpetually youthful and being so involved with what you're doing that you're not always following the rules or being aware of the more mature things. And this is where Saturn gets debilitated, is in this particular nakshatra or lunar mansion. And so it's just important that you, you know, pay attention to other things, even though you're really passionate about what you're doing, whether it's cooking or doing yoga or your whole... Uh, gardening episode or your sexual hijinks or whatever the whole thing is, is that um, there's always other things going around and there's always ways that we can bring more love and life into whatever we're doing. And that's what uh, Barani is all about. And so that's a, it's a beautiful nakshatra for, for today. And it's about awareness too. It's, it's about um, 
observation as well is another thing. And it's also about challenging ourselves to say, hey, where am I sort of immature still? I mean, I'm, you know, I'm an older cat. I'm a grandpa and stuff. And um, when I was growing up, there was like this whole generation of older baby boomers that uh, were in the hippie movement. And they were never going to grow up. And now I'm seeing them dying in front of me left and right. And I'm going, holy crap, how did this happen? They were never going to grow up. And where did that leave us? The, you know, the punk rock disco Gen Jonesers and earlier Gen Xers. It's like, oh, what are we going to do? <laughs> you know, um, we're thinking about it, you know. And um, I wanted to say, if you're new to this show, I'd love it if you subscribe. Even if you're old to the show, I'd love it if you subscribe. And I want to greet my friends out here who've been faithfully watching, like Shant and Melissa and Rebecca and... Um, so many others of you, Wordsley, and uh, my my new Cancer follower, and um, my 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 many uh, Pisces followers. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, so we'll get back to this. So we talked about the Vedic astrology implications. And the other thing is, is that in Vedic astrology, just um, on the sixteenth, so that the sun that that evening moved into Libra, actual constellation Libra. And so the sun's in Libra in Western astrology. The moon is in Taurus in Western astrology. The sun's in Libra in Vedic astrology too, but the moon's in Aries. But what we can put together from this is that, you know, the sun is debilitated, folks, in Libra. And, you know, you notice this. I mean, it's I think especially in Western astrology, just... Days are getting darker. Sun's like, oh no. <laughs> and people's authority really gets challenged a lot. We have a lot of issues around authority in the um, constellation of Libra as well as probably the seasonal Libra. And, you know, it's, it, it's uh, here in the United States, it's like a federal election year, and, um, and I mean, where I live, it's also a local city council election, and you're going to be held accountable, and it is not going to be easy, because people, as soon as someone comes into leadership as a, as a ruler, it's much easier to diss them than it is to support them, especially in Western culture here in the good old U.S. of A. where I live. So it's just something to keep in mind. And, and, and to have, pray for your leaders. Have compassion for them. Um, I, I think that whatever happens in the election, it's going to be hard either way. Right? You know? And, yeah, you probably could go by my implications that I actually think one that normally, historically, recent history didn't seem as bad. But I th I'm thinking, like, you know, war is not good for anybody folks, um, you know, and, <laughs> and, you know, I, I think people that engage in unnecessary wars are despicable. I, somebody had to say it, um, because it's like, you know, blessed are the peacemakers, and we have to realize we have to go into peace. Now, I understand also that war, though, helps the economy, and that, you know, there's a time to go to war, too. There's sometimes it's right to go to war. I mean, Arjuna and Krishna and the Bhagavad Gita, it's all about you have to go to war. And King David in Judaism, you know, he had to go to war and he was at war with Saul. And and he restrained himself from killing him. And and you know, that's like a great thing too in like the Plains Indians when they were engaged in warfare. It was like to touch your enemy and not hurt them. The, these are the very Libran principles that we want that are good that we want to have. You know, we you know, there's a time and place for everything. So, I, you know, and, and no one is perfect, but you have to realize that we live in a, in a country and stuff where our money interests dominate the whole political spectrum. And so it's, it's definitely feeding on materialism. And, you know, you're not going to have your body forever, but you probably are going to have your soul forever. So what's feeding your soul? You know, that's the question that we really want to ask, especially in Libra time, because everything's in the balance. We're approaching more darkness every day. And with that, and we're concerned about being nice and getting along with everybody, because that's the whole harmony thing of, of Libra. But at the same time, 
we also have an agenda. We're a cardinal sign in Libra, and you know, we want, in order for us to be successful in our art, in our um, friendships, our, in our careers, in our negotiations, in justice, you know, Saturn gets exalted in Libra. It's like, how do we create justice? And it's, it's for everyone. In, and as soon as we mis mistreat some person that maybe historically was even on top or somebody we don't like, as soon as we just mistreat anyone, this is part of our behavior we're demonstrating to ourselves. We're sending ourselves a message. And um, I see this a lot on social media, like people bait other people so they could get into a, a situation of group bullying, you know? And I'm like, why? I mean, I know most of us were too, are too young. We missed Nazi Germany and fascism in Spain, and we didn't have our chance, you know. <laughs> well, with that said, <laughs> greetings, Aries. Welcome to your horoscope. So, okay, so... Today, the moon is in your second house, and it's there moving closer to Uranus as we go through the day, and tomorrow, Saturday, the moon will be in Critica, and moon and Uranus will conjoin each other, so there could be some sudden, like, whoa, what happened there, you know, earthquake, fire, you know, all explosions, things like that, you know, sometimes things like that happen. Um, but for you, it's like taking care of your mouth, taking care of your eyesight, and um, now that, you know, Mars is debilitated in the fourth house, fixing up your home. Being, try not to argue with your parents too much, you know, they show some old school respect, you know, that, that would go a long way. I think there's a lot of encouragement to just be rebellious right now, but, you know, it, it can come back to you. Greetings, Taurus. Welcome to your horoscope. Well, so moon and Uranus in the first house. Now, that's where, you know, you got to make sure you don't bump your head. Uh, and then we've got Mercury, and pretty soon the sun, on the 22nd, the sun will enter into uh, tropical Scorpio. And that's your partnership sign. And so it'll be there with um, with Mercury. And, and so showing intelligence in a relationship and being more of a sweet talker. Uh, Venus is in the eighth house. So there's some things in your relationship you really don't have control of. And you've got to be okay with that. You know, being okay with not being in control and relinquishing control is the only thing you have to control is yourself. And then you'll be good. Oh, greetings, Gemini. Welcome to your horoscope. So, the moon's going to be in Gemini, I think, Saturday afternoon through Sunday, early Monday. So, that's like, and, you know, Jupiter's there, too. So, there's a lot of expansion. There's a lot of good good fortune. There's a lot of, like, moving up. Things are getting blown up, too. You know, a lot of times when planets conjoin Jupiter, things tend to get exaggerated. So, you know, just keep everything in a chill vibe. And, I mean, Libra time is wonderful, Gemini. It's a fifth house. It's heart opening. It's great. Sun's going to move into Scorpio. That's your sixth house. So that's where you have to, you know, watch your health as we go into this darker season. You're not getting as much vitamin D. Weather's starting to get a little colder in the northern hemisphere. If you're uh, north of 30 degrees latitude especially, and um, and more so if you're north of 45 degrees latitude, oh, good God almighty, like people in Portland and in Maine and Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan and stuff, it's like, ah, oh, you're getting real, you know, it's getting savory. <laughs> uh, yeah, so take care of yourself. All right, greetings, Cancer. Welcome to your horoscope. I mean, the only one who really seems to benefit super well from Mars and Cancer is Cancer itself. You know, cancer is um, not that comfortable with having enemies, not that comfortable with conflict, because it's just, it's emotionally taxing, that's why. However, and Mars is going to be in Cancer in both systems too. It's going to move 
or it may have moved already into Cancer in Vedic Astrology. Let me just check up on that there for a moment. As we were, uh, well, well, certainly by, yeah, by tomorrow, anyhow, we're going to have um, Cancer in both systems. Wow. Um, that's, that says a lot. And, and so, um, You know, masculine power gets dampened by Mars being debilitated. So does the sun. Masculine power gets debilitated. And we're definitely living in a generation where we're paying for the sins of our fathers. And, and people think, well, let's just switch everything around and see how that works. Well... Yeah, you know, I mean, I mean, there's a lot of ways to do that. I mean, uh, on the more extreme level, it's like hormone and surgery. But I, I think it's it's different. I think it's more like there's a time we all need to step into our courage and our masculine energy. And there's a time we all need to step into our feminine energy and be more nurturing. And be perhaps a little bit more within and, and looking at that. And, um, you know, you gener generally you're rocking a more feminine type of energy in, in Cancer. Pluto in the um, seventh house of relationships are changing. And um, Venus in the sixth house, you know, do something to free up your day. But some moving into Scorpio is actually going to be great for you. You're going to do well with this. In spite of the debilitation, one of the things that's really great about Sun being debilitated is that there's more negotiation, and and one good thing about Mars being debilitated is we're sensitive that we don't want to hurt other people. Greetings, Leo. Welcome to your horoscope. Um, okay, so the Sun's moving out of debilitation in Western astrology this week. It'll still be debilitated, and you know, in Vedic astrology, and and that only counts if you're you're born like August 16th or afterwards. You know, if you're those late Leos, you're Leo Leos. You're not, there's no question. Those of you born like the 15th and before August, you know, and in July, you're all cancers, you know, in the Vedic, in the sidereal system, you know. Sorry. <laughs> not sorry. Um, you know, because I'm here to inform you and, and, and teach you the truth. Otherwise, those would be a really lousy astrologer. And because um, Jyotish is a light of truth, and I, you know, I learned, even though I started out in Western astrology, I, you know, I, I graduated in the, in the more Vedic Indian system. And what I, you know, but even in Greek astrology, it's whole house too. What you, what you really learn is that these planets are kind of like living energies that um, dictate vibes in our life, no matter what your religion, race, gender, Creed, code, everybody gets affected by this stuff. Nobody gets a pass, you know. Um, and I just say, like, for you, it's, you know, it's been rough, but you're connecting with, hopefully, with siblings and friends. That'll make all the difference in the world. Look for the people that support you and, and get that support. And people that are, you know, bullies and just want to taunt you and tease you they don't really want to get to know you. They just want to be in a position of power. Mm -hmm. Well, greetings, Virgo. And welcome to your horoscope. And, and, you know, most of you Virgos, unless you're born, you know, after the 16th or perhaps even on the 16th of September, you're Vedic Leo. And so the sun now debilitating is affecting your health and the way... You see things the way you do things. Now, the one nice thing about Scorpio, sun moving into Scorpio, is that it's going to um, put you in touch with better communication, better information, in touch with your community, in touch with the library, working with your hands, doing your, your talents and skills. Um, all the stuff you learn between 14 and 21. A lot of that applies. It's sort of flirty, too, and Mercury um, in Scorpio. It's third house for you. Good communication. 
um, relationships, it's got to be spiritual and there's got to be discipline involved in it. It's going to take work and you know that and that's where we're at. Greetings Libra, welcome to your horoscope and happy birthday to my Libra friends. I want to give a birthday shout out to Robert Johnson over in Minnesota who's turning 56 on the 22nd and um, and I want my friend Andy whose birthday is the 21st he's also turning 66 and so is one of my gurus which is um, Ama Kuriyamari um, she is a lovely lovely person born in 1958 and uh, she spent 10 years fasting and praying that's pretty badass you know you don't um, you don't meet people like her very often and she's spoken to the UN she's just doing a lot in India to help farmers to help clean up the water to help girls get educations lovely soul so birthday shout out to her um, birthday shout out to you know Tom Petty I guess would have had his birthday on the 20th and yes Kamala Harris um, is going to be 60 on Sunday so lots of you know lot, lots of birthday energy all around and so if you're one of those people having a birthday this week oh yeah I want to give a birthday shout out to Jalila and Patrick Pape over in Sedona and Patrick's turning 60, Jalila, I think she's turning, I don't know, 30 something or other, I'm, I'm not, I think 30, I, I think it's 35, so anyhow, everyone, happiness, 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 who's having a birthday this week, okay. We're going to move forward to Scorpio now. We talked about Scorpio. So, greeting Scorpio. Okay, so debilitated sun. So, Tuesday afternoon, sun moves into Scorpio um, on the 22nd. Wow. You know, that's, that's something. Um, and, you know, it's a Mars day. So, and, and Scorpio is a Mars ruled sign. I mean, I, yeah, I know about Pluto too. It, that counts as well. Because Pluto gives the insights, you know. Scorpio has like that deep research vibe, insights, a lot of passion, key phrases I create. Uh, you're moving in your system, um, and so you become the flavor of the month. And good things naturally will happen to you as you're in that season. So the next four and a half weeks, it's going to be all about you. <laughs> and so... Um, you know, interesting things in relationships, even even this weekend, and you have a real spirit of adventure. I see a lot of travel coming up for you within the, within the next year, and um, and a lot of your creative works, you're just going to get disciplined and establish them and make it work. Reading Sagittarius, welcome to your horoscope. Well, <clears throat> good news is Venus is in your first house, so... Venus in your first house brings love. It brings kind people. It brings creative people. It brings a sense of beauty, handsomeness um, <clears throat> in your life. So that's positive. And um, Venus and Jupiter are kind of opposing each other, you know. And, and, you know, Venus is considered the planet of wives and Jupiter is considered the planet of husbands. So they're in a dristy. They're in a gaze. So there's sort of this sort of kind of flirty, fun energy. And they're also gurus. They're also people that dispel darkness and bring greater light in your life, these two planets. So I, I just see there's like, um, good things are happening now. On the other hand, for Sagittarius, <clears throat> Danger Will Robinson, you know, um, you are having an 8th house transit of the sun, um, and a 12th house transit, rather, a 12th house transit. So things, there tends to be some kind of loss, there tends to be things get kind of, blurred and you got to watch your blind spot is basically what it is get enough sleep make sure you're okay you're feeling good because you don't want to end up getting sick and you know with the sun and mars being debilitated and all it's like oh my gosh you know and you know and that affects you most of you are, are vedic scorpio so that mars stuff it's a big deal and um you know just just check yourself before you wreck yourself okay <laughs> Greetings Capricorn, welcome to your horoscope. You've got 
Pluto in the first house still um, going direct. You got Mars in the seventh house. I mean, dealing with conflict. How do you successfully deal with conflict in your life? How do you negotiate it when people come out after you? It's really strange how I see people. You know, one of the things I've learned from like the teachings of Pema Chandra, and this is like a Buddhist woman, she's written books like When Things Fall Apart, and the one I really like is Comfortable with Uncertainty, and she's like, say, so drop the storyline. Just pretend like nothing ever happened before. Let everything be fresh and new, and you be in the moment right now. That's really what it's going to take. Uh, Libra time rules your career. It rules your public life. It rules your karma with the public. And uh, Scorpio time is more of a party for you. That's like, yeah, I love Halloween, you know, and I'm, you know, and even uh, Armistice Day. I want to just celebrate life. The trees are turning color. Everything's getting prettier, and you know, and, and so it's kind of like a party season for Capricorn. And uh, I, I'm gonna, you know, Saturn's over there in your third house. It's just. Keep things really chill with the neighbors and your friends and your siblings, and, and uh, just keep working on your creative projects. Okay, we go to Aquarius right now, and um, you know, Libra time is a good time for Aquarius in general. It rules the ninth house, so there's a lot of travel. Moving over into Scorpio time, this is going to be more about your career. This is going to be more about your ability to engage with the public, do good things. Saturn is in your second house with Neptune. So, you know, you gotta be, I would say the best thing to do is go practical. Listen to Saturn a little more when it comes to money. Neptune, on the other hand, is about making donation, giving to other people to create wealth in your life. It's not that they're gonna give you the money back, but you're creating, it's the karma, it's the spiritual bank. It's like there's a saying in the, in the Gospels where Jesus said, lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and dust does not corrupt. You know, and about having parties where you invite people that are not able to pay you back. The poor people, people that have disabilities. Um, those are the people, you know, and that's where we really get in the heart. It's like when we honor people that are going through stuff that where they're suffering. And there's many kinds of suffering. You know, when I see people behaving badly, it's probably because they're suffering. It's not just because they're a jerk or whatever. People with simple minds will just relegate it to that. Like, oh, they're just, you know. It's like, well, you're just showing yourself, you know, unfortunately, be reactionary and, and just like them. It's like, hey, I understand you must be uncomfortable there. <laughs> we just don't take that mindset enough culturally. And, and hopefully we can as we're, we encourage each other to grow more this way. And um, really watch your health, Aquarius. This debilitated Mars in the sixth house. You know, just be careful while you're exercising. And, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, don't overdo it. Okay, Pisces, welcome to your horoscope. Um, Saturn and Neptune in the first house. So, heavyweight outer planets. You know, we are nothing without a spiritual life. You get that. I mean, that's you. Uh, but being disciplined and kind of following the rules, being on time, uh, being practical, having a savings account, having... Um, paying your bills, all that kind of stuff, all that um, apologizing when things are wrong, you know, taking responsibility for things that don't work out in your life. That's really important. Now, Libra time was eighth house transformation, other people's stuff, other people's property. Not the easiest transit. Now, as we go into Scorpio this week, I mean, I'd say by Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, you're going to notice there's a shift and it's like, whoa, wow. The whole world is wide open and I'm learning new things and, and it's so creative and colorful and, and it's kind of sexy and intense and it's like, wow, this is so interesting. I want to do something. I might go back to school. I might learn something. I might travel and go to Bali or, or to uh, Chile or, or South America or some, some, somewhere else, South Africa, uh, <laughs> Hawaii, New Zealand, I don't know. You're going to go someplace exotic and fun. And uh, even if it's just some place in your own neighborhood you never visited before, it all works, you know. It's, just, it's all about the learning. We go places within ourselves. It's really, the outer trip is really affecting us inside. That's why we love doing it so much. You've been wonderful to me. I want to thank you. I want to give you a gift. I just had some t-shirts printed out. So, um, 
I might have some swag coming up pretty soon. I'm, I'm kind of excited about it. And um, anyhow, if you're, you know, ever want to get a personal reading or whatever, drop me a line, you know, in the comments. And uh, I will be happy to communicate with you and we'll see what we can work out. Thank you so much for being here. You are such a blessing. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell notification. Share it with a friend. Om Shanti 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 Om Tat Sat.